but sometimes you have a capillary refund two phase. Now, two phase is basically you can imagine liquid water, let's say, becomes vapor, vapor becomes back, get condensed, becomes liquid. So, there's two phases. So, you have this either this option or this options. Okay, and uh, you have a high capacity heat pipes. Heat pipes, we can imagine it's again what are heat pipes? Heat pipes are basically a loop. Uh, a loop of uh, a system consists of a, a liquid or fluid which transport your heat from point one to point two. Simple. We will uh, also provide you that uh, uh, data sheet uh, of uh, heat pipe for your reference. In this room, sir. Then you have types of uh, heat heat pipes basically for satellites. You have uh, this is actually fixed contact uh, conductance heat pipe. This is variable conductance heat pipe, meaning. Fix that means the transportation. Uh, let's say you have an uh, well a particular uh, distance, the conductance of it that means the capacity of heat rejection is fixed throughout the system, or you can have multiple kind of uh, uh, conductance. That means the conductance can be different. Let's say one spot you have an simple aluminium, another spot you have basically an enhanced uh, cooling system. Which transports is slightly more. That means the exposed uh, 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 exposed area is actually is larger. Therefore, basically the conductance will be also altered different. So remember the contra conductance also uh, is a function of the actual uh, distance of cooling. So if you you don't have you may have a constant one or you may have a, a different or other variation one or variable uh, conductance. You can have two three spots. Spot A conductance is different, spot B conductance is different, spot C conductance is different. Variable conductance, you can have that depending on the actual requirement that you have. Remember, all the subsystems have different operation regime, different uh, uh, temperature generated. So you can have a different conductance, uh, a variable conductance, a heat pipe as well. So it uh, depends on the actual, but these are the types that you have. Another one, passive uh, control system. Passive control system, uh, thermal control system are practically, uh, if you don't have, you have a heat pipe. If you have a heat pipe, then if you don't fix a pump to the heat pipe, it is going to happen through the, the flow is going to happen because there is a heat and because of the capillary effect that you have in the heat pipe and the surface together with the surface tension of the liquid, Technically, you are going to actually have a very passive flow. Remember, heat is going to uh, flow from a hot spot to a cooler spot. That's how the heat works. So that transportation works without electricity. If you want it to be fast, you put a pump. When you insert a pump, then it is going to be an active pipe. A passive type of a thermal uh, thermal control system, not only uh, uh, heat, uh, heat pipes, but also insulations like blankets. You have the thermal blankets, we call it. So, thermal blankets, later we will discuss that thermal blankets. So, thermal blankets also we can use basically to protect any radiation from outside, any heat from outside. We can actually have a thermal blanket. Now, imagine uh, if you want to maybe uh, bake something, you have that aluminium foil, you have a uh, uh, well, the food inside, and then you wrap it up. That is actually is going to contain a lot of heat inside. So that is also a thermal control, uh, well, uh, passive thermal control method. Go on. Okay, look at the passive system. So passive system is good because I don't need any electrical power. When I when I have a thermal system, I need electrical power. What I must have? I must have a bigger battery. I must have a, maybe a bigger solar panels. So my mass gets bigger, my volume gets bigger, and obviously my cost is going to get bigger. So it's well, it's good to avoid fluid mass flow or line mass flow. So fluid basically there's a fluid actually is flowing practically. Line mass flow that means there's a huge amount, uh, there's a reservoir, and then from the reservoir basically there is a fluid flow that is actually called mass flow already. Okay, but the uh, uh, fluid lines basically you have like just like the uh, heat pipes. You have a thin uh, loops 
looping to just actually to uh, reject the heat. You will see that as well. Uh, stakers, there is a sensory basically. Normally, you have a thermometer. Yeah? Uh, well, technically, a uh, thermometer is basically that you should, you should be having, having uh, thermometers uh, to, to uh, look at the actual temperature to monitor and the control equipment. So, you don't need all this basically for a passive system. So, can you imagine? I don't need to worry about the control system, don't need electricity. I don't need uh, any thermometers around that to constantly monitor the temperature because it happens naturally. Uh, so other options I have, well, if uh, passive is that, and exclusive is only if basically uh, uniform temperature environment. Technically, very small kind of, uh, well, relatively small satellites, uh, almost not much of temperature, high temperature gradient, uh, typically, inside generated temperature also is lesser. Remember, I just mentioned last time that uh, if you have a very high power consuming uh, equipment, thermal control is going to be tough. So, you have a low power consumption inside, so it will be a very uh, easy job basically for a passive uh, thermal control system. Low internal dissipation, as I've said, uh, and low payload and equipment demand temperature. So, uh, when you keep that a very uh, small amount of actually power consumption internally more often than not you can you can be uh, happy with the passive thermal control well, now what you see here is a passive thermal control system that is available for space application all in all whatever you can imagine for not only satellites for any other application yeah. now i go one by one Typical one, please, thermal insulation, multi-layer insulation. We're going to highlight this because this is very typical for satellites. The rest, yes, there are uh, usage as well. Okay, important uh, multi-layer insulation. For example, if you look at a satellite, sometimes you look at all these uh, wrappings of, it looks like a very gold kind of wrapping. That is actually is a multi-layer insulation. Uh, it's called uh, captain. Krypton, sorry. Uh, then uh, you can have also Myla. Uh, Myla. Uh, it is an aluminium kind of a base. So you can have this uh, multi layer. Uh, you have a Krypton layer on top, then you have a uh, aluminium layer. So you, there is a quite a thick, uh, uh, not very thick, but two, 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 three layers basically for you to uh, do insulation. Or you can see you have a single Krypton layer, which is just like a gold color, and you will wrap it. And that is going to actually uh, help you in terms of uh, radiation, to protect you in terms of radiation. That means the external radiation to enter, any heat to enter that apartment, it can be actually uh, avoided. Okay. Uh, then you have other solutions. Uh, can, uh, but these are not for common. Huh? The common ones are basically, uh, as I said, uh, multi, uh, uh, multi layer insulation. Then uh, heat sinks. Heat sinks are very common. Uh, Heat sinks are nothing but it is basically uh, uh, you have seen in the computers that we have also in a, in a spacecraft uh, to do to do and uh, the heat transfer here normally happens through uh, conduction. That means to say you have a CPU, CPU to basically uh, heat pipe. You have a heat sinks. This is quite common in a satellite. Uh, then thermal protection. Uh, well, don't, don't worry much about this. This is more into thermal protection system, average uh, abrasive material. This is uh, for capsules re-enter. Also thermal control system, but not for satellites. Huh? We don't use for satellites. Uh, surface finishing, yes, indeed. Uh, for example, uh, second uh, second surface mirror, second surface mirror basically is the polished mirror uh, with, uh, let's say, solar panels will have actually these paints. Yes, you will have. This is quite typical for also satellite. This is also passive. Huh? And finally, uh, you have uh, uh, thermal straps. Thermal straps. Uh, just now you have you have seen. Uh, huge, let's say, uh, uh, an equipment you want to actually insulate the equipment, use a capton, uh, let's say, insulator. It's just like a paper, uh, just like a aluminium foil. So you just uh, wrap it. In order to seal that, we have also something called thermal straps to seal it. So it's just like uh, stickers to seal. So that's they have a thermal uh, uh, strap. And uh, you have a con uh, constant conductance uh, heat pipes also, as I've said, heat pipes when you don't put in the electricity inside it is a passive mode 
it happens actually in the surface tension and the capillary uh, mode. Okay, so you have all these. Uh, more important again, uh, paints, secondary surface mirror, multi-layer insulation, heat sinks. Uh, you have a thermal stripes. Still, yes, you do if you do as well. These are for satellites. The rest you may you may have it like all this uh, ablation. You may have it in uh, capsules, re-entry capsules. Okay, this is massive. What? And I've given uh, the actual uh, absorption and uh, emission. Uh, obviously, white paint, secondary mirrors, they are very good uh, emission. Okay, and uh, absorption always black paint is going to absorb it more. So these are the two parameters. It's very important when you want to do thermal control or rather thermal uh, control design. You will see in our exercises, these are the two parameters that we always will, will use and to, in order to calculate the temperature build up or even the actual amount of heat generated within the uh, spacecraft or satellite. Two, uh, so these are quite typical, this should be given. Because why? Uh, we should specify what kind of uh, surface are there that we are dealing with. Okay, go on. Okay, now uh, thermal control light like, system. Now remember, uh, this is uh, a rocket engine, I think you know. Uh, I uh, think you will, you will be exposed uh, during uh, rocket technology. Uh, thermo thermostat, of course, works with the temperature uh, well. Uh, you, need, you need to have a heat basically for it to actually function because you have uh, two different uh, materials that are involved. Now, attention need to be a uh, cartridge heater and then cartridge heaters, and uh, these are types of cartridge heaters. Now, cartridge heaters uh, is important, the reason being, for example, I told you that. Uh, yes, indeed, bigger job is basically to reject the heat that we have on board. But don't forget, there are sometimes uh, satellite environment becomes very cold, especially when you go into the eclipse. There are parts of the satellite that never never been exposed to the sun. It will be cold when you even go into the eclipse part. So now, for those kind of parts, those kind of areas, you need to maintain, let's say, 10 degrees. It drops down maybe to minus 5, minus 10. Then what you have, you have this cartridge heaters basically to do heating instead of cooling, instead of ejecting the uh, uh, the heat out of uh, uh, your satellite, you are going to actually use our electricity which we generate on board to heat up that area so that you can maintain about you know the, uh, the temperature that actually is needed. So don't forget not only to eject but also to uh, heat up and to maintain the temperature regime that we have. Okay, go on. Now, uh, active. Okay, why, why active is, is, is important? High transport transfer capacity. Fluid will keep on flowing. Okay? Then, uh, extended basically uh, uh, transport distance. If it's a very long, long distance, huge spacecraft, space station, definitely is going to be active. You can't afford actually to do passive. Accurate control, you will have devices basically the free flow will be actually is controlled. High uh, isothermal quality, isothermal quality that means what your uh, payloads temperature variation it is so so high, so minimal, so so minimal. So if you have a very very tight requirement of plus minus temperature to maintain maybe optics, for example, then uh, uh, active control is important. But the problem is that look at energy consumption, prepare risk of leakage. This is another biggest uh, problem. Perturbation, vibration, pump is running. It's going to cause vibration. As it is to fly a satellite, it's going to be difficult. And plus we are introducing and it has been disturbed by all those elements, all those uh, disturbance from outside, I mean space. You will also learn that uh, in uh, uh, space mechanics. All, all those uh, space elements basically are being disturbed. Okay. Now, on top of it, we have introducing a disturbance inside the body, which is the pump. Pump is going to create jitter. Yeah, it's going to actually uh, cause vibration. So we need to worry about this as well. So it's not easy. Yeah? Not easy. Basic. Most of the satellite we don't operate with pump. Let me put it uh, clearly. Uh, huge spacecraft. Uh, that means uh, habitat spacecraft. That means uh, humans who's going to live in capsules. Space stations, yes, 
this is one of those things that we use. There's no system, this is just like a uh, loopers, huh? is well, uh, you have the windows, the old windows basically, when you open up, uh, just like this, when you open the window, that means you have a higher surface or contact area outside. When you close the window, basically you don't have much. So when you open up, you have a larger area and according to that uh, Stefan Boltzmann's law, you have a bigger surface in contact with the environment, the more radiation through radi uh, the more radiation can actually happen. That means more heat can be transported via radiation. And one one phase uh, loop, yes, this is I think I've explained to you. It can be one phase, single phase, or it can be multiple phase, two phase, in fact. Cold plates, cold plates, afterwards you see what is cold plates are. Radiators can be body mounted. You will also see what is radiators. Radiators, radiators are basically uh, it's just it can be actually with the motor which extend, which extends and then uh, uh, gives you a, a amount of surface basically for that radiation to occur when it's needed. So it has a sterile type also. If you don't need it, then you close it. So there are many types that we have. Electrical heaters that we have seen. Uh, Peltier heaters. This is something very unique. Peltier effect. Uh, it's something related to thermoelectricity. Now, uh, when you have heat. When you have heat flowing through a particular material, if that uh, material, for example, gallium, uh, it will actually have a thermal electricity. So that means the heat is being transformed to an electrical energy. So therefore, the heat can be actually sort of uh, well ejected. So that heat is also is available. Okay. Uh, but very very it's not for satellites and you don't, you don't see much in satellite heat pipes very common for satellites you have a variable conductance yeah, very typical and you have a fixed conductance these two and this i have, uh, i will provide you the actual uh, uh, well example how it is being embedded in a satellite especially in that uh, solar panels because solar panels become very 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 uh, hot in fact when the solar panels are very very hot the performance of a uh, photovoltaic uh, cells also will be actually dropping. So you need to cool down it. Cool down. Pump, capillary pump or two-phase. These are so these are the options that you will have for the heat pipes. Uh, two-phase, as I've said, two-phase or even uh, single-phase. Okay, one. So, same like uh, active active control. You as uh, a passive control, you have an active control now. Radiator. You have radiator operation mode, you have a conventional radiator, we will look at it later, body mounted, steerable and all sorts. Dazzle system is loofers, imagine just like windows, opening and closing. Single loop fluid, you have heat changer, cold plate. Single plate, that means that the water does not change the phase, does not evaporate in fact. Two, two phase, you will have mechanically uh, pumped. Or you have a capillary pump. Okay, that means what? Passive. This is a, this is almost like a passive. Okay, it's almost like a passive. But uh, when you have a, a two-phase loop, basically what you are having, the mechanic, the, the pump will be actually is introduced. Huh? Then uh, uh, heat exchanges as well. Uh, heat pipes. You have a variable. Okay, variable conductance. That's why you have a, a heat pipe diode. You have also another type of uh, heat pipes. So, uh, cryogenic heat pipes are basically a supercritical uh, state of heat pipes. That means that whatever it runs it into a supercritical uh, uh, state. Uh, we don't use much for, uh, for satellites. Okay, uh, we use a, a, a variable conductance and a fixed conductance. Heat pipes are very typical for satellites. Cryogenic system, cryogenic radiators. Uh, you will have. You can find this uh, uh, in uh, rocket. Can find this as well. Uh, Thermoelectric devices. You have electrical heaters or patch patch heaters. This is for heating up. All you see here is for cooling. This is basically is for heating. Actually, okay. So a typical one for satellite electrical heater, cold place. You have a heater. Heater is what? It's just an electrical resistor. 
pump in electricity, you get heat, and then uh, you can heat up the environment. Okay, this is cold plate, as you can see, single uh, single phase. All your equipment is on top, battery, your computer, on board computer. Then what you have, you have a, a thin passage that means to increase the surface area, fluid flow comes back, then you have uh, uh, the heat is actually ejected. Uh, you don't have this in a, in a satellite, but you will have it in a future spacecraft. Huh? So if you look at the internal design, these are the options that you have. All these are very, very different designs. Idea for all these kind of designs, V shape, you have W shape, rectangular, to just increase the contact area of the fluid, fluid flow. So simple ones is this, uh, you have electrical box, thermal model, pumping basically the flow, flow in and flow out, heat is being transported out. So how much of the heat is transported, uh, you can calculate through MC data, yeah, the typical heat transfer formula. Okay, now uh, this is a two-phase uh, flow versus a single-phase flow. Now, if, uh, obviously, what I'm trying to show here is that just like uh, 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 what is that? Uh, the performance graph that we have. Huh? Uh, if you look at it, now this is the uh, space shuttle. Huh? Space shuttle uh, example that is taken here. Now, uh, if you look at it, a pump. If you need a higher rate, basically a pump. You need to actually have the pump. Pump loop. That means what? You have a pump inside. And if you don't have a pump inside, it drops tremendously. Look at the amount that actually here. It's almost about uh, 10 volts. Yeah? Almost about 10 volts. You have 100 volts in there. 10 to 10 to 100 volts you have. So in order for it to uh, have a higher capacity, or rather higher uh, heat injection. Uh, but again, uh, satellites, you are not going to actually uh, look at a pump option. Uh, we, can, we can have a, a typical heat pipes, uh, uh, variable conductance, or uh, basically fixed conductance. That's all you have. Okay, it's already good enough for us to operate. Okay, go on. Now, uh, this is just to tell you that, okay, uh, capillary pump, the heat, uh, heat pipe, how it actually works, uh, simple. Heat, heat comes from where? Heat comes from the heat body. That means your satellite, heat comes here, there is a contact. How the heat comes here? Heat can come here through conduction. Okay? From equipment to here, it can be conduction, metal. Then this is called an evaporator. Then what happens is that it actually evaporates the fluid. What you have here goes, okay? It goes there basically, then it comes to, to here. This is condensation. That means uh, here at this state, the liquid becomes vapor flow here would be cool down when you cool down vapor is cool down basically then it becomes liquid form and you start the process again and again so if you want this to be fast you add a pump you can add here yeah you can add pump so when you have a pump so technically speaking it's going to go fast in fact so when you have a pump, you can if you have a pump, you don't have to actually have a vapor mode. You can just have the fluid mode. That means you don't have to vaporize that uh, uh, the liquid because you already have a pump. So it's basically it's a single phase. When you have a pump, this, this is two phase. Huh? Uh, when you have a evaporator, when you have a condenser, when you see there's a condenser, it's a evaporator is already two phase. Okay. But more importantly, okay, this capillary end. When you look at uh, so capillary pump. So capillary means what? Capillary, as I have said, if you, if you cut this uh, pipe, you see it will be grooves on the wall. So what exactly happens when they heat up, the liquid gets well uh, heated up, then turns into vapor. Vapor gets and attached to the so-called grooves, it's like a, a capillary, and the flow starts. Okay. That's how actually it's called capillary. So it's, it's uh, helped by the actual design inside. Uh, nothing, uh, no electricity whatsoever. It's just the design inside. So that, and you can have, as I've said, you can have testing for active thermal control using the system. Okay? Again, remember, if you have pump, you don't have to have two loops. 
you can just have single loop fixed pump the uh, fluid is actually will be circulating to transport your fluid ok uh, so transport distance basically can be uh, up to about 10 meters distance is quite good uh, multiple set points within a one, one uh, degrees that means uh, one degree of uh, temperature basically you can you can have uh, food or other can maintain uh, capillary pump or pump this too you can you can use pump you don't have to actually use pump it depends on the options that we have okay how much you want to but again 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 satellites avoid pump so we have always basically a single loop where uh, you can have a flexible flexible conductance no problem we can have a fixed conductance no problem but we will not actually have pump okay uh, lower weight basically and uh, then uh, mechanically pump systems is uh, low cost also when you don't have the pump system it's going to be low cost okay uh, radiators what is radiators radiators basically it is going to give you an extra uh, surface and the surface is going to actually look at outside of your spacecraft it provides a radiation surface so body mounted increase the surface then heat is dissipated you can imagine you can think huh? that means this is the external inside this is a, a capsule so inside you can have heat, heat pipes okay uh -huh. go on uh, before before this okay assume this huh? assume this is actually a radiator star here miss coolant comes here hot hot huh? it comes here hot then get exposed to the radiator radiator cools it down so how that heat is transported from here this spot to out is radiation Go on. these are the sudden but these cannot just exist just like that at the back there is a good uh, uh, core plates it could be uh, heat pipes that you have depends on the system that you want transport system this is basically exposure system you call it exposure you can call it exposure you're exposed to the outside to have a surface so that heat can be radiated out so you have a lot of design huh? you can have stereable but for satellites basically is practically is it then a space that you have or the walls of satellite itself is going to actually act as a radiator in that sense okay these are for huge this is a capsule huh? human capsule okay go on okay uh, you have look this i'm giving you shuttle type radiator you have basically heat pipe radiator and you have a space station radiator so huge this would be a pump so what it means that uh, heat pipes, okay, heat pipes, radiator, radiator is a fins. All these are fins, basically to to increase the surface area so that radiation can can happen. Now, more importantly, what you need to understand here, all these radiators are basically ejecting the heat with only one mode. Stay one goes much low. That's the only way we can reject this. Uh, before this, please. You see, here is all space. Only way I can reject heat from inside is the radiation. So I need to have radiators. Okay, go on. Okay, go on. So start. Okay, now this, as I've said, I've uh, mentioned to you the most complex uh, well, thermal control system is even much more complex than the satellite itself. It's basically our space station. Yes. Very very complex. Okay, you will have uh, basically active thermal control, external thermal control. You will have also passive thermal control. This is just basically for you to just uh, have a look at it and uh, to study a bit. Uh, I've given you all those uh, abbreviations around here. So even look at look at the amount of uh, panels they have. Now this is going to be also a heat source for the body. Good. Bigger panels you generate more electricity by the same time you also have problem with the heat so we need to in satellite that is a uh, that's also a problem uh, so more often than not we use heat pipes basically to cool down the system especially the panels because panels is so huge sometimes it actually collects uh, sun rain at the same time it also collects the heat you know the solar flux yeah. now look at it I've uh, uh, gave you all those uh, evaluations also okay uh, that thanks then we can actually proceed with some uh, exercises for you to understand how can we use 
uh, all those formulations that we have and how to estimate uh, our heat uh, in a spacecraft. Thank you.